Welcome to Behind the Scenes. I am your host, Hector Montalvo. This show is dedicated to asking tough questions for you, the viewers. We bring you their responses, and we let you decide. Joining us here today at our MCTV studios, we are honored to be sitting down with two Methuen City Consulars. First, from the East District, Consular Pat Giuliano. Hector, Welcome nice to, the show. to be here. And from the West District of Methuen, we have Jean Papalato. Welcome Hi, to the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you know, I am an inter international star. My show is seen in Africa, Asia, and the whole nine oh, yards. I didn't know that. So for those people that don't know who Jean Papalato and Pat Giuliano are, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? We'll start with you, Jean. Wow. Uh, this is going all over the country, huh? Well, they'll surely know who I am after this. Um, <laughs> I am a West District Counselor. This is my uh, second term. Uh, I live at uh, 139 Forest Street in Methuen. I've lived there for um, 30 odd years and I've been a resident of Methuen for, like my husband said previously, almost 50 years. Uh, I love Methuen and uh, the reason why I decided to run for council was I felt as though it was time to uh, I had retired at an early age, which I was very uh, uh, lucky to do. Um, I thought that I'd like to give back a little bit of uh, community service to my community that I've lived in. And I was elected the first term, been elected on the second term, and I really enjoy, my, my enjoyment as a city councilor is helping my constituents. I really, really enjoy uh, if I get a call that they can't do something on their own uh, through the city uh, hall and they call me, I feel very, very fulfilled that I am able to, most of the time, 99% of the time, I have been able to help them and get their problem solved. So uh, that's, that was my main reason for running for city council. Very happy with it. And uh, it's, um, it's been quite a ride, let's put it that way. Well, we appreciate everything you do for the people of Methuen. And Ms. Juliana? I've lived here most of my life. I think it was probably five years when I was uh, a teenager. We lived up on Prospect Hill, but came back to Methuen. Grew up on Ashford Street, went to the Ashford School, which are now condominiums. I uh, married. Um, I've been married for 38 years. I stayed home when I first got married and uh, had my children. And my husband thought that I was just becoming too... Um, too uh, um, um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> complacent. I, I, yeah, complacent. I don't know. Probably quiet was the word. I was the mouse that roared. So he challenged me. I got out there. I started selling real estate. My kids went through the Papuana system. Uh, I was a team mom. I was the treasurer there for about five years. And then I was elected as the first female president of the Papuana League in the Merrimack Valley. So uh, I was uh, fortunate to meet all the other coaches and all the other presidents. And we had meetings. And I, and I did that for five years got the program um, to where it was when I ended up leaving and uh, sat back for a while and ended up uh, coming here to MCTV to work some cameras which did not work because I could not keep quiet long enough to run the cameras <laughs> so they they delegated me to the control room um, and um, then just started becoming active in different things the, the um, Public Safety Commission decided to run for office because I, like you, Hector, used to take the podium on different issues. And I have found that when you take the podium, although the citizens are the ones that are supposed to tell us what to do, they were not, I wasn't getting any responses. They would listen, but then do their own thing. So I felt as though the only way to accomplish anything was to run for office. And at least they would have to listen to me, and then I would have to lobby to get my point across only to eight other counselors, not to nine counselors that didn't know who Pat was. So I ran uh, in 1999, and uh, we, I ran for the three two-year terms. It got term limited out. We ran unopposed the last time, uh, which was boring, but it was, it was nice. We ended up doing a, a lot infrastructure. At the time, it wasn't major things. It wasn't a school. It was taking care of the streets and the roads and bonding for that. Uh, stepped out for four years, got on the Water and Sewer Commission, found that we went nowhere after a year of really um, in-depth study. And uh, Dr. Khalil was on the Water Commission, presented our water rates. I believe one of your cameramen uh, did a lot of work on the, uh, the Water and Sewer Commission, presented our case, thought we had the votes, changed at the last minute, 
And that was the challenge that went out. If you ever do anything to lie to a group of citizens that have worked for a whole year to help this community, then I'm coming back to office. Because if you're not going to listen to me on this side of the podium, I'm going to be sitting in one of the seats. Fortunately, I was able to get that point across, and I got the support I needed, and I'm back on city council. Great. That's uh, where I am now. <laughs> We thank you. We we glad you're at the city council speaking up for for those people uh, out there for all the constituents of Methuen. I mean, you know, people seem to forget that government works for them and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. I want to turn um, the subject a little bit to something that's been in the news lately, which is um, the executive session meeting that happened on June 25th. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the AG's office has gone on record stating that. Methuen City Councilors had violated the open meeting laws uh, when it came to that June 25th executive meetings. Do you agree with the Attorney General's finding? And if why? If so, why? I was surprised to hear about it. And let me tell you why. Because we had a city solicitor sitting with us through the whole process and was asked at least a half dozen times if at any point we are going beyond where we should be to violate any kind of laws that have been put in the books. Tell us. We need to know this. This is why we have a city solicitor that is supposed to be working for the city council, to watch our backs. Now, the city solicitor <clears throat> is paid by taxpayer money, but he does work for the city councilors, That's and correct. the city councilors yes. work for the people of Methuen. Correct. Yes. Okay. I'm glad you, you, you did that whole thing, because I think that whole concept has been lost along the way. We work for the people. He works for us, okay? Um, so we have to get our leads from him. So through the whole process, was I surprised? Absolutely. Uh, when I got the call, I think, from Council Papalato that we were going to be called to task for this, uh, I couldn't understand why. If, if our solicitor is sitting there, how come we're in this position? So I think I lost point of the question, do I agree with the AG's office? Obviously, if this is what we weren't supposed to be doing, absolutely. Uh, it has to uh, be addressed, and it was. So whose job is it to ensure that the consuls are advised of what they must do for the people of Bethune so that the AG doesn't come back and say, you violated an open meeting law? Well, again, uh, Hector, that would fall under the solicitor. But just getting back to the first question, do I agree? I guess I have to agree. But I will say, and I'm going to speak for all nine, well, there were only eight there. Uh, one was on vacation. Um, I don't believe that all eight of us that were sitting there realized at the time that we were breaking any law. We didn't realize it. Um, our solicitor was there. He was um, going out coming back in when we needed to ask him questions. But most of the time, he was there. I believe, and I'm, you know, going to speak for our, our chairman, Mr. Cronin. I, you know, obviously sat right next to him, and I heard him at least on two occasions. Peter, are we, you know, overstepping yet? Uh, are we close to the line? And the solicitor would say, No, you're all, you're okay. Um, what was in the paper, and I will uh, say that that was not part of the violation. What uh, the Tribune had printed. Uh, there were 41 pages in this document of uh, minutes. What was printed in the paper was not the violating, uh, what we were violating uh, supposedly with the AG. Uh, that was contract negotiations that we were talking with with uh, the superior officer's representative. And it got on after that to the last five to six pages, I believe, which was the uh, violation of the open meeting law, when one of the counselors asked um, everybody to leave the room. Again, I don't think that we realized that we broke the law. Do I agree with the AG? I guess I have to. Um, Let me just start. I, I read that particular section, uh, and, I, and, I have, and I have it here. And you know, if anybody wants to uh, take a look at that, they can go on the website. And, yes, and, correct. And yes. you could also visit behindthescenes.weebly.com, where we will publish that. Can I uh, ask you, though? Can I just... just uh, yes. Were yours blacked out like mine was? No, this one is not oh, blank, uh, blanked okay. out. I, I am aware that there was two separate copies. There yes. was a blank out copy. Now, what was the purpose of two separate copies? One that was black, blacked out, and then there's one with everything in there. Well, the copy that, that we got in our packet, which 
I, I mean, bells went off instantly. This is not okay what the AG was looking for in my opinion now I'm not a solicitor but then again we had one sitting there that we got in trouble even though he was sitting there so I think I can give an opinion also um, and that is why was it blanked out and I knew that we were going to have an answer when we went on the floor that night and the answer was attorney client privilege I did not argue the point that night all right I let it go because you know you can only beat something and if you don't have anyone else that that understands what you're saying the attorney client privilege in my opinion and I haven't asked anybody else okay goes both ways why was it the attorney comments were blacked out and not his clients which was us so I think that was one of those statements that were made but held no water in my opinion and I know I'm gonna get called to task for this but I have a response, and that's going to be on the next council. Uh, Can the meeting. people be considered a client? I would think so. Because you work for the people. Right. So we're representing right. the people. Absolutely. Right. right, correct. So, I mean, how do you black out what an attorney says when it's a counselor asking him the question? Why wasn't what I asked blacked out also? So, again, well, the AG's office wanted the copy, not a blacked out. <clears throat> My argument, again, why wasn't a memo attached to these minutes that I got in my envelope saying from our solicitor that works for us and is supposed to be protecting us, counselors, I blacked it out because of this. But at the next meeting, you can waive the attorney-client privilege. I just did it for the sake of whatever it is. I got no memo with this, and I think it's wrong because my first question was to the city council secretary, who gave you the authority to black out something that I got quoted every single word, and I said every hiccup and burp, yet the, may, yet the solicitor. And there were things said, and I'm sure you have it, during that executive session illegal part that was said by him that wasn't even in the minutes. So. Hector, I said it at the council meeting, waive the privilege because I have no problem whatsoever with anything that I said during this executive session. They're 41 pages and everybody can read it and see what I said. It was in the paper. I have no problem. Transparency has been always my uh, platform when I first run for the first two years. Transparency to the public, that's who I'm representing. That's all I care about. I don't care what they read, what they don't read, okay? I understand that at some point in time you have to have an executive session because you may be dealing with something very, um, uh, and, I, and I'll say like um, a litigation problem. I don't think that um, we can do that in open session. It's, you know, kind of, um, it's personal. Okay, I don't have a problem with that, but I will say one thing that from now on, if we have to have an executive session, and I say if we have to, because I'm going to try um, voting no on executive session from here on out, unless it uh, pertains to a litigation problem or a, 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 an employee personnel problem, I will make sure when we get into that executive session that we are made aware that the attorney will tell us what to do, what to not to do, okay? And then um, if, in fact, those executive minutes can be um, made public afterwards once the decision has come about, I have no problem because the public is paying the bill. They should know what's going on. Let, let me just uh, quickly just state that uh, we have uh, invited um, the solicitor to appear on our show to answer some questions about the conflict of interest. Okay. We are still waiting on a response from him on that particular issue. Uh, but it's my understanding that uh, the solicitor must get the permission of the consul for him to talk to the media or anything like that. Would you guys go on record to give your permission? for him to appear on our show to answer some of these questions for us, for well, the viewers? I'll yes. answer that if, you know, he, he does need to get uh, the permission from the chairman. Okay. Um, but I really believe that he needs his permission from the mayor in order to come on here, okay? Even though he does work for us. Uh, and I think 
it's seriously, that's where uh, he's going to get his answer. Now, one thing that troubles me is uh, we, we already established that the solicitor works for the city councilors. Yes. And basically his role is to advise you um, of laws that you may be violating. Correct. In the executive meeting, I've read that at one point in the discussion, uh, a counselor had asked that anyone who is not a counselor to leave the room. Why was the solicitor allowed to leave the room if he's representing the city council? He was asked. He said, is that a problem? Um, I think it was Councilor Giordano asked if uh, it would be a problem if he left the room. And his, I believe his answer, and I stand corrected, and I will come on and say it publicly, differently, yeah. publicly. I believe his answer was, as long as you keep the tape running, there shouldn't be a problem. Okay? Yes. Again, and then left the room. I think it were people out in the hallway that, uh, you know, let out this battle cry that they're having an illegal meeting. And that's how this all started with the Eagle Tribune and everything else. So he made it clear as he was standing up. I think he looked over and said, as long as you keep the tape running, you're, all, you're okay. That was my understanding and the way I heard it. But he also was sitting in, partaking in the meeting that I feel as though was the violation part. So again, what we have to do is we have to really, really make sure anytime we have an executive session that we are not going to, I mean, he's the one that has to advise us, plain and simple. And I think that kind of went by the wayside on this. Now, normally, uh, when someone doesn't, doesn't do their job in the private sector, they get fired. And they don't collect uh, a pension or they don't collect uh, uh, pay while you're suspended or anything. You, you get terminated and you end up at the unemployment line where the unemployment will make a determination if you were let go for cause or if it was because your own fault. If a solicitor is not representing the city councilors as they should be, is there any recourse that the city councilors can do to end the contract, or do we have to, do the people continue to pay someone that's not doing their job? I mean, I'm just asking the question for the people, and maybe you can answer that. Well, yes, I mean, there is, but I'm going to go back to um, the 5 4 vote or the 6 3 vote or the 7-2 vote. It all depends on what the council wants to do about it. Um, I'm going to say this, that at a meeting when we brought up about um, the blackouts that were in the minutes, and I don't think, and you know, I don't want to step on anyone's toes here. Um, sure I don't. don't. I don't believe, <laughs> I don't believe at that meeting that anybody was going to question it. I believe that they were just going to vote these minutes through. And I know it was Councilor Giuliano that um, first brought up about she would have liked to have seen a memo. Uh, he did make a, a statement that, I'm sorry, Councilor, yes, uh, uh, you're right. I did have a memo ready, but it just never got to you. And then when I made my statement, I says, you know, what's the reason? And that's when he said, client attorney privilege. Well. I want to waive my in. I don't care. And that's when the other counselors fell into place. But I really believe that they were going to pass these minutes the way that they were. I don't think that that is transparency. I don't think that that was right. And again, how would you get rid of somebody or, or fire somebody or reprimand somebody if you don't have the votes on the council to do so? We've always been under this, this, this false feeling that because there's a title that goes with the name that they are um, they're above any kind of wrongdoing misinterpretation their opinion is right and we're wrong and this is what I find this time around on City Council I fight constantly um, has it happened in the past? Absolutely. We have people that think because the priest is a priest, 
please everybody, God forgive me if I'm, if I'm overstepping bounds here, but I need to make an example. And those of you who know me know how I do it very bluntly sometimes. But a priest is a priest, okay? He gives out communion. All of the stuff that is surfaced in, in, in you know, the churches and everything, people couldn't believe it because you would never believe a priest would do it. So it shows you, number one, we have, we're all human, so there's a human factor there. Number two, when you read a law, it's the way it's interpreted. And if, and if Jeannie interprets it one way and it's the same sentence, it's the same words, it's the same you know, sentence we're both reading, it's how you interpret it. And unfortunately, I am more critical because I've been through it. I remembered sitting there being able to be told that this was the right thing, never question it, because they would never put us in harm's way. I'm working for the people, but we didn't have a lot of hard situations. We didn't have all these lawsuits that are pending right. back in, in 2000 and 2001. We didn't have it. So this is all new to me. When I question somebody, I question because I believe that there may be another answer. When I do that, and Counselor Papalato can speak for herself, I have some other people that, again, we're all human, say, no, he said it, it's the law. So if you can't see beyond the title and what his position is, then you know what? We're never going to make it better. We're going to let things slide. And if our job does nothing, listen, I'll be a minority vote all my time on council, but I am going to make statements. I am going to make sure that people know what I know. And when I say something on the council floor, you can take it to the bank. I have some documentation in my folder that will back up every word I'm saying. I don't randomly make a statement. So can they be fired? You know, Absolutely. But it's the opinion of everybody. So You know, Hector, uh, she was saying how she questions, I question. There's nothing wrong with questioning authority. And that's, you know, all I have to say about that because not everybody is above the law, if you want to say, you know. Correct. And we, and we see it all in the news. I mean, let's take the, you mentioned the, uh, the pre-scandal that happened a few years back uh, and it's still happening. Uh, we can see the probation department with the hiring practices. Uh, you sure. know, basically you could be a probation officer for who you know and not what you know. Exactly. Okay? Right. And basically it's just happening all over in government. What can the people actually do to hold government accountable? I mean, right now, when the people violate the laws, the people go to jail. When government violates the law, the people go to jail. So when does it end? I don't know if it's ever going to, and that's the discouraging part. I came back to office to think that my knowledge from the last time around would be helpful Make a difference. because I knew the behind and I love the behind the scenes stuff. I've said this over and over again. That's when you learn stuff. I, I apply the behind the scenes knowledge to the floor and people think that you're angry, you have a vendetta when, when it's the knowledge that you're trying to bring forward. You know what, Hector, honestly, I don't want to discourage the viewing public out there. I don't think it's ever going to be fixed. I think you can maybe um, make it a little bit better and go after the um, blatant things, but you know what? You're always going to yeah. get the behind the scenes. You're always going to get the favors. You're always going to get all of that stuff going on. The and name the recognition only time, and the money. You know exactly. what? Nepotism. Yeah. Nepotism. Yeah. If you make it a law, which will, would be unconstitutional, that the only people that could run for office were those that didn't have a relative of any kind in any branch of office on any board, then you know what? You would see people doing the job they were elected to do. And that is make the right decisions for you, for you, for you, okay? Not because you have to have it your way because I'm gonna lose my kid's job in another week if I don't make the decision to keep you where you're at. So people that run for office should not either have family and, and it's silly, it's a silly statement. Shouldn't have family, relatives, or anybody working in any branch of government or any entitlement that can be given out 
once you are in office. And I totally agree with that. I mean, that, that to me, it's always been an issue of conflict Hector, of interest. But I agree 100% with what you're saying, but it's almost impossible that that's right. ever going to happen. So as far as that's concerned, what I, and this would be personal, I'm not speaking for anybody. If it were me and I had a child, a relative, a cousin or whatever, just the perception of having to vote on something, I would expect the solicitor to say, uh, counsel, you can't vote on this. I would have no problem, obviously. But even if he didn't say it, I would go to him, I would ask him, uh, so, Mr. Solicitor, am I allowed to vote on this? If he says, well, yeah, he says, I don't see a problem, I wouldn't do it anyway because I wouldn't want to have the public perceive me as a conflict of interest. It's just out there, people don't like it. So what I would do is I'd get up out of my chair and I'd walk out of the room, Hector. Okay, and that way the, uh, they can't come back at me and say, oh, she's got this one and she's voting for this one because that's her sister, that's her cousin. I don't want that. Yeah. Let me just remind the viewers, you are watching Behind the Scenes. I am your host, Hector Montalvo. Uh, you can visit our website at behindthescenes.weebly.com or you can join our Facebook at Facebook slash Hector Mont Behind the Scenes with Hector Montalvo or if you want questions asked of your legal representation or your government, send us an email at the Hector Montalvo Show at yahoo.com. We have about two minutes left. Um, where do we go from here? As city councilors, what steps can be taken to ensure that none of this happens? You know, that the people have their government. We continue to have people like you take the yep. podium. We need people taking the podium. Yep. We need backup. We need you to say, listen, I know that you're going to have, I have some counselors up there that what I say matters, okay? And I will never stop, never stop bringing forward information that I have, making or giving my opinion as to what I think is wrong, challenging you if you don't do your job, and not being afraid to vote no on issues that are going to affect the entire city, even if I'm only one. Hector, I agree with her. I'm going to go one step further. I love people coming for public participation because I don't know what they're thinking unless they tell me. But we've had many people come before us. We have one of your camera people here that come before us. Every single meeting for two years, three years I've been on council, the, the council don't listen. They don't listen when they the people come and they say, I'd like to know about this. I'd like to try and get this enacted. They don't listen, Hector, okay? This is part of the problem. Now, is politicians and diapers really have one thing in common? And that's <laughs> listen why they to me. need to I be was changed. in real estate and all I heard was used car salesmen, so don't start with the <laughs> diaper thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you for coming in and uh, talking about the particular issues that are facing the residents of Methorn. And I want to thank you, the viewers. I want to thank the crew at MCTV. I want to thank the staff at MCTV. I want to thank you, the viewers, for watching. Watch us next time as we go behind the scenes to ask the tough questions, bring you their responses, and we let you decide. Thank you for watching.